Good afternoon. I'm here with Mark Melsness. He is the designated broker and the leader really here at Spinnaker Property Management. He's also a property manager himself, of course. And um, today we just wanted to talk a little bit more on the rental side of things. So um, what his opinion is and his perspective from his experience of how to find the best renter. So uh, sounds like you have some thoughts prepared, Mark. So go ahead. Yes, of course, I've got thoughts. You know, one of our biggest requests or inquiries with our clients that own the homes are, how do you find the renters and how do you make sure they're the best fit? And as it's difficult to always have the exact fit, what we do is have our criteria that allows us to have a very clear expectation set for the potential renter so that they know what we're looking for and we do it consistently and fairly throughout all the homes that we manage. And how we do that is we do that with uh, credit, criminal, rental, income, and employment verification. So that's a lot of information and to just summarize that up is, you know, credit has lots of implications and we don't necessarily go off the FICA score. However, we look at what makes up the FICA score and any of the other uh, impacts that come with a historic credit um, history. So, so I have so, a question before you go on. So how yeah. much of that is regulated or required by law? That how, how does like the state of Washington, for example, regulate how you stay objective about your rental criteria? Is there like certain ones that you have to consider and others that are sort of subjective or is it really set out for you or how does that work? Yeah, so the laws try to give some guidance to be fair to all that apply and also not set a very specific standard on how people are okay. to have criteria set for their renters or prospects. So in the, in the credit side, there's really no influence from any of the government agencies on how that works. Mm -hmm. Now on the criminal side, we can't categorically deny anybody for a criminal or a, excuse me, a felony conviction. So what we do to, to be clear about that is, is on our criteria, it lays out what items of convictions could be considered for denial. You know, anything to do generally with children, weapons, violence, um, or sexual in nature. We're just, that's not gonna work in our criteria form, so that would be a, possibly a denial. Got you, so they yeah. give you general guidelines, but how do. do you go about and specific things, yeah. yeah. Typically, the, those guidelines are to support the protected classes so that they all have an equal opportunity to apply to the homes that work for them, just like the people who are not in protected classes. Right. So I would think you would also have developed sort of an intuition about this as well, just having done this over and over again. And I mean, I would think that you would have maybe a keener sense of a good renter versus someone that starts for you tomorrow. I mean, do you think that's true? Do you use a kind of a... Great question. And part of the law that the um, that is set out is, is that it is very clearly stated that we are required to work with the first qualified applicant. So who, in mm -hmm. our particular case, whoever completes their application and puts down the reservation oh, wow. fee okay. is now in first position pending credit approval. So it protects the renter from any slant you might have based on your past experience. Even the most yeah. seasoned and best meaning landlords mm -hmm. can uh, inadvertently discriminate and deny somebody because of a personal opinion that could be of a personal, or that could be of a protected class. Right, so your so process protects you from discrimination. Our process is yeah. very rigid, yep. and it's very consistent, and it's not even very consistent, it's totally consistent across the board. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then in, that was credit and criminal, rental history, all rental history, that's not, there's no guidance on that. Um, just has to be good, that they paid on time, that they uh, didn't, cause any damage, that there wasn't any notices, and that they fulfilled their lease agreement. Income, now there is a impact on that. Here in Washington State, um, uh, all income is considered income, whether it's private or, private or government assisted. So if they're on a voucher or in a Section 8 program, 
we cannot deny somebody because they are on assistance. So if, again, that's another place where the government agency has in place where somebody who is of low income can still be considered with their income plus the government assistance amount to fulfill that uh, threshold, which ours is two and a half times rent. So if it's $1,000, the household needs to make 2500 And is that 2.5% something you've established, or is that... It's an industry standard, two and a half times. Yeah, I've heard three times too. And there, there, I've seen them yeah. down to two, and I've seen them up to three and a half in some cases. Wow. So it just uh -huh. depends. It's it is depending on the owner and the management company. So. So it sounds like the law provides you some safeguards for staying fair, but you also have some things you can interpret and. Actually, yes. Yeah. There's a lot. They they're trying to support fairness and equality across the whole application process. Mm -hmm and also leave it up to the owner to, to have their standards that aren't discriminatory to manage their risk for their property. And the way that our process is set up is that we're working with people with good credit, people who don't have the, the concerning criminal issues, that have good rental, and they have good income. In addition to that, we also have their deposits to hold. So if there is a default somehow, we work closely with those occupants to make sure that they fulfill because they don't want to have an impact on their good credit and they don't want to um, impact their, uh, we, oh, excuse me, we have their income that we know that we can have and their employment and their rental history. So you can balance the risk with the deposit Absolutely. that you hold? Absolutely, yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what else is there to share about looking for a good renter? So, of course, I assume you're talking to a property owner. Yes, and we also have the same conversation with the applicants. So mm -hmm. what's what we actually get to bring to the table is that the we're very clear with what the expectations are with the owner and who we're going to have live in their home. Mm -hmm. And we're very clear with the potential renter on how they'll need to qualify for the home that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits of Spinnaker is that we have a large variety of inventory from time to time that maybe they don't qualify for that price point. Mm -hmm and there might be a home that still works for them that's at a lesser price point that still fulfills all their needs. And that is what so great good, management companies yeah, do. So good things to understand because, I mean, you have a fairly polished, sort of a high-end brand, really, and yet I think what you're explaining today makes it more approachable. To me, it makes Spinnaker more approachable in how you decide on renters. You have a variety of inventory, like you described. Yep. It's not just you know the $3,000 a month condominiums or whatever. And you try and keep in balance with the law and, you know, kind of what you know and how you can interpret the law. So yes. it sounds like there's some good protectors there. All right. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. If, if you have any questions on our criteria and how, you know, any more detailed questions on our criteria and how we could best find the renter for you in your home or you in the home that you're looking for, go ahead and give us a call at 253-830-5160, Spinnaker Property Management. Thanks, Mark.